The reason we can, that I can do this is because in 1979, as a brand new Christian, I bought into God's word. I mean, I, mean, it would, I was just, I'm bought in. I'm not, I'm not a salesman. I'm not a very good salesman. I'm not a good shopper. I'm a buyer. I'm not, a, I'm not selling. I'm sold. But let me tell you, I'm sold on the programs of this church. I'm sold on our, on our, on our kids' ministry, on our, our early learning program, and our youth, our youth ministry. I'm sold on it. Well, but everything's changed. Schools have changed, and, and teenagers have changed, and families changed. Hey, listen, we can adapt to change. We're, we're adaptable. We're going to become all things to all men, and we might save some. But let me, let me just help you. The buy-in isn't to the systems of the world. The buy-in is to the word. That's what I'm bought into. That's why this whole thing works. See, I'm a word guy through and through. I'm not, I'm not agnostic. I'm not, I'm not a Calvinist. I'm not looking at it thinking, well, if it happened, it must be God's will. That's a bunch of bull. Yeah, you know what? God's in control of my life as I submit myself to his word. If my life isn't submitted to his word, everything's just up for grabs. And, and the bottom line is, I don't want to live that way. I don't want to, I don't want to pastor a church. I don't want to lead that way. I want this message today to be a sure thing in your life. You know, there's people that'll say, well, there's no perfect churches out there. That's not what the word says. The word says that when we're in, we're in unity, to, that we'll come to a, we'll, the church will become a perfect man. And that, that we could be people that were perfect and complete, lacking nothing. But the narrative of the world has convinced us that, well, we're all just sinners. Let me help you. The Bible says that God doesn't hear the cry of the sinner. So if I were you, I'd quit saying I was a sinner. See, we've got to identify with Christ. We've got to identify with God's word and not the narrative of the world, even though it's, septed, it's, it's kind of crept into the church. It really has. Man, for, for decades, I've stayed apolitical. And I'm running in my lane. And it's great because my lane's here and politics is over here. And they're running in their lane. So I can run in my lane. But something happened a few years ago where politics kind of swerved into my lane. Well, now it's like, wait a second, that's political. It's never political coming for me, ever. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to pronounce the word. I'm going to expose the devil. The devil's lying to people. The devil's deceiving people. The devil's accusing people. That's all he can do. Well, the devil put cancer on me. The devil can't put cancer on you. Cancer goes with the fallen world. And what did God say about the fallen world? That God said, look, be fruitful, multiply, subdue it, and take dominion. See, what happens in your life, listen, initially just comes from the fallen world. But how it plays out in your life is determined by what you put your trust in. It's determined by what you're dependent upon. I'm a word guy. And what I know after 43 years of serving God, after 43 years of abiding into the word, God is faithful to his word, period. The one sure thing that we have in this world is God's faithful to his word. See, you'll say, yeah, but I don't have. Yeah, what does the Bible say about that? You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask amiss. Yeah, if it, any kind of selfishness, yeah, God's not playing that. See, we've got to understand that. See, the word, God's word is the absolute truth. Man, there are church denominations splitting. Not over gender lifestyles, not over, not, not over other, no, over the resurrection. Because it cuts people out that Jesus is the only way to God. Well, let me tell you what the truth is. Jesus is the only way to God. And if the world's going to bow up about that, I say we let them. See, this is the, the idea of this, is that if you're not fading the heat, I don't think you're preaching the word. I mean, I mean the, the bottom line with that is that. In John, the eighth chapter, let's go to the word today. In John, the eighth chapter, the 31st verse, the, the Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word and, and you're my disciples indeed. See, the product of our life is that we're disciples. 
We're disciples of Christ. We're, we're di- we live our life with the disciplines of the kingdom, not of the world, okay? And, and then Jesus said this, if you're my disciple, if you live in my word, if you abide in my word, you live in my word, you'll be my disciples. And he said this, he said, then you'll know the truth. Now, knowing the truth isn't like you knowing your multiplication tables. Is it like you knowing all the capitals of all the states? Okay, you knowing the word, it's an intimate knowing. It's how Sandy knows me. Like I can try to get by with things with Sandy, but she'll say, whoa, 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 Bill, I know you. I know what you're thinking. I'm like, you don't know what I'm thinking. Yet she does. Okay, okay, but it it said, look, you'll know, you'll intimately know, you'll be one with the truth. And he said, the truth shall make you free. See, the B side of that verse does not work with the A side, without the A side. The A side of the word it, is, it, look, when you know the truth, it's going to set you free. The truth doesn't set you free. You have to live in it. You have to intimately know it. That's your responsibility. See, the, this, this whole thing, it starts out mental. So your emotions are involved. Man, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm a wreck. I need God. I need to go to church. I feel guilty. There's shame in my life. It's all, it's all this emotion. And then, you, and then you come up. Now listen, and, and you'll, you answer an altar call or you pray with somebody or you're, you're in front of your, your, your TV screen or your computer or whatever it is now. And, and you say, God, I, I give you my life. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. See, now you become a new creation in Christ. And the Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And what's, what's interesting about this is because of the couple of people that I really couldn't relate to as a brand new Christian, none of my buddies were Christians. And, and these Christians that I, that I didn't even relate to them, but I connected with a couple of them. And let me tell you, that connection is huge. Not just the beginning of your walk, but throughout your walk. You know, Paul said, know those whom you, who you, whom you labor among. And, but, I, but I remember thinking, man, these guys, there's, there, there's something I'm attracted to about how these guys talk and how these guys think and how things don't matter that used to matter to me. And I'm, I mean, when I say brand new Christian, I mean like the next day after I gave my life to the Lord. I knew nothing. And what, what Jesus said, look, if you... He said, abide in me, live in me, make your decisions in me. And then I in you. As the branch can't bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. See, what the... See, what the enemy, it's, it's very difficult because Jesus makes himself real to people. So people give their lives to the Lord. But then the buy-in is where the enemy really kicks into gear. To get us not to buy in, not to buy into church. Oh, it's not that big a deal if you go to church or not. Oh, you could, you could, you could go to church and you could just do it virtually. Man, pretty soon there's, gonna, there's a mega metaverse that's going to be out there and no one's going to go to church. It's like, wait a second, where does the, 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 the gifting coming upon your life? The, now listen, I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about the ho-hum status quo. I'm talking about the gifting that God inherently met, created for you before you were born that is manifest in your life because someone puts their hands on you. That's what Paul said. Remember the gift that you received when I laid my hands on you? He said, and then he said, listen, by reminder, you stir that gift up within you. The Bible says we cast out devils, we speak with new tongues, and we touch any deadly thing, it won't harm us. We lay hands on the sick and they recover. And you know what? I guess we could say, hey, put your hand on your phone screen right now and, and match it up to my hand. But, but there's something about contact. There's something about connection. There's something about that, that, wait a second, I feel the faith that's in the room and I'm not picking it up like I feel fear or like I feel anxiety. There's a trust here. There's a dependence upon God here. 
And what Jesus said is, if anyone doesn't abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and withered. And then we gather all those branches, we rake them up and we throw them and then they're all burned. And I look at my life and I think, how many, in the last 40, 30 years of serving God, how much of my life has been just raked into a heap and burned? You know, it's, it, it's, like, it's like the image that I have of, of tr- transitioning from earth to heaven and going from life to life. And I, I, every, every, every deed, everything I've done, everything I've said goes through the fire. There's wood, hay, and stubble that just goes poof, and you're like, dear God. And I'm, and I'm, I'm hoping, like, you know, like if, I, if, I, if, we, if we go at the same time, Chano and I, I want to go behind him, because if I go ahead of him, he'll see this big billow of smoke come out, and I'm like, and, but, if I go, but if I if I go, if he goes ahead of me, it'll just be a little poof, it'll be like, dear God, there's nothing. But the wood, hay, and stubble, but then the, also the things you did that are connected to God go through, and those are gold, silver, and precious stones. One of them gets poofed. The other one, the other one gets galvanized. The other one gets, gets purified. The other one, man, it, it comes out. And let me tell you, that equates to our reward in heaven. And that, that's another message. But, but I look at it that in, in my life, how much of my life just goes up in a puff of smoke because it really doesn't matter what, I, what happened. I'm telling you, it matters that you're here today. Today matters. See, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask whatever you desire and it'll be done for you. I mean, you think about that verse right there, 15, 7 in John, that he said, look, all you've got to do is live in me and my words have to live in you. And you've got to live by my word and you've got to, rep, you've got to put your dependence upon my word. Then whatever you ask... It, It'll be done for you. No, whatever you desire, shoot. It reminds me of Matthew, the sixth chapter, where it said, look, that don't go after things the way the Gentiles, godless people go after it. God knows that you have need of those things. God knows you need a vehicle. We just don't, we just don't go after those vehicles. We, we, God knows you need to be out of debt. We don't do it the way the world does it. You'll say, how do you do it? Well, I give my way out. See, and the bottom line is, is that that's what works for me, and because it's scriptural. But what, what, what Jesus said was, he said, look, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all those things will be added unto you. See, so if we live in the word, all those things will be added unto us. And, and why? Why is God going to give you everything you desire if the, if the word's alive in you? Is because it glorifies him, is what gl- verse 8 says. It brings glory to God. And in and, and verse 9, as the Father loved you, I also loved you. And then Jesus said this, abide in my love. See, that's what's produced in our life. Love never fails, right? Everybody say that. Say it again. Say it again. Okay, love never fails. We want that love in our lives. We, I don't like failure. So love never fails. How do I get to that love? That perfect love comes from abiding in the word. His word abiding in me, his word living in me. I don't just know it, I I have to live this word. And Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments, so you. These things I've spoken to you, now listen, that that my joy may remain in you and your joy may be full. See, listen, what joy comes first? His joy. His joy is in us. My joy is full from his joy being in me. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Man, his joy comes into my life. How? Because the word is working in me. See, the word's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's not just something we know. It's not multiplication tables. It's not, it, it, it's not the, the capitals of the states. It's not, it's not studying that stuff. I study the word because it's life to me. It's health to my flesh. See, it, it, it's interesting, just the, the walk of Jesus. Think about this. Chapter 9 of of Matthew. When he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him. Worshipped him. Listen, saying, my daughter's just died. Now think about this. He doesn't come to him complaining or griping. He comes to him humbly. 
He comes to him with a specific need that requires a miracle. So he said, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she'll live. So Jesus got up and he followed him and his disciples came with him. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years had spent everything she had with doctors and only got worse came from behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And she said to herself, if only I could touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, my daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that very hour, okay? And Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd Wailing, which is common sense. You don't want fruit, flute players in your house, <laughs> whether your kids died or not. You just get, the, get those flutists out of here. <laughs> and he said to them, make room. There's the door. For the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. Let that, let that sink in for a little bit. We do this right. We live the kingdom. We preach the kingdom. We depend on God. We depend on God's promise. The world will, will ridicule us. It's going to happen. But when the crowd was, out, was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all their, that, that land. When Jesus departed from there, two blind guys followed him. And they, they were crying, they cried out, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened and Jesus sternly warned them saying, see that no one knows it. And you guys know how that worked out. They went and told everybody, you know, and which is interesting anyway, it wasn't like God healed them from like heart disease or, or something that was internal. It was external. Like, here are these two blind guys that were blind, and he's like, okay, you guys are able to see now, but don't tell anybody. Everybody's going to know anyway, all right? But, but understand this, that the idea of this is, you look at, here's, here's a step, a, a centurion comes to him. Here's a step, a woman with the issue of blood comes. Here's a step, the daughters were there. Here's a step, the flute guys were in the house. They ridiculed him. Here's a step, two blind guys come. I mean, I mean, you just look at the pattern of his life, and that's the pattern of trusting God and putting your dependence upon God. How could Jesus walk like that? He knew God intimately. He said, Me and the, the, I and the Father, we're one. See, that's what we have to be. We have to be one with God's word. The covenant that we have is determined by the buy-in to God's promise. And see, we've got to understand that. In the book of Titus, let me tell you something. The letter that Paul wrote Titus, Titus was a key player in the kingdom at that time. Titus oversaw a group of believers on the Isle of Crete, and it was an adversarial position. It's similar to how America is becoming. And his, so, so here's, how, here's how Titus, so Paul writes to Titus, and in verse 11 in chapter 2, he says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, searching us that denying ungodliness and worldly love, listen, denying ungodliness, the world, what it, the attitude of the world that's crept into the church, the carnality, is we're trusting our senses and we're not going to trust God. It's, there's, there's so much that, that is, that's, agnostic, there's so, many, there's so much Cal, Cal, Calvinism in the church right now, it's crazy. Well, it happened, it must be God. No. I'm telling you, God's in control of your life as you trust and put your reliance upon his word. That's how God con- is controlling in your life, is that you submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee. And see, we understand that, okay? teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, 
righteously and godly in this present age. All right, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now listen, which at that time is his word. See, what's going to happen is his promise is going to come alive in your heart. You're going to speak it with you in your mouth, and it's, it's going to appear. That's how it works. That's what Paul is writing to Titus about. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Listen, zealous for good works. You know, we, we're prompting people, man, it's, it's like, man, team guts, man. Man, we need you to help park and seat and greet and, and, and serve our kids. And, and man, we've got a huge VB, VBS that's coming up in two weeks. Man, every, everybody should volunteer for it, should be a part of it. Man, I'm telling you, what the world is feeding our kids, the narrative of the world that our kids are subjected to, I'm telling you, we've got to be a stronger voice in their lives. But, but Titus 2.15, Paul writes, it says, speak these things, exhort and rebuke. Now listen, with all authority, and then in the New King James, it says, let no one despise you. What the Amplified says here is you speak the word authoritatively enough, listen, that all they have is respect for you. I don't expect the world to like what I say. I don't. But let me tell you something. They better respect it. Because this battle's not mine, it's his. See, I've, I've got to look at it. And when I think about Titus ministering on, at, on Crete and it all being adversarial in front of him, and Paul just writes him and says, Look, you got to own it. You got to take authority. You preach this at a level that they have to respect it. Is my life totally dependent upon God? That's my question for me. In, in Romans 4, Paul writes, it says, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. The same righteousness I walk in. For of those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise of no effect. Because, where the, because the law brings about wrath and where there's no law, there's no transgression. And that's where, listen, that's where the narrative of the world is trying to seep into our country and probably globally. It's like, look, the, we're making up our own rules. You know, the Constitutional Republic right now is under attack. Why? We don't, we don't like rules. We don't want those kind of rules. We want our own rules. We, we, we want the narrative of genders, and we want the narrative of sexuality, and we want the narrative of education, and we want the narrative of, 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 of nutrition. We want, we want all those narratives to be rewritten. And you know what? What we've got to do is we've got to take our eye, keep our eye on the prize. We've got to keep our eyes on the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In verse 16 of Romans 4, therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace. See, see, this isn't just a faith message that we preach. It's, it's grace attached to faith message that we preach. See, the faith that I have, the faith is, man, when I take a step of faith, when I trust God's promise, his supernatural ability, his power, his favor comes with it. And, and, and in this, it's according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only those who are of the law, but to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it's written, I've made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, listen, God, here's how Paul defines God, who, get, who, who calls those things which be not as though they were. It's going to contradict your senses and gives life to the dead. Who, contrary to sensual hope, senses-driven hope, in hope, believed. I'm not trusting, I'm not putting my hope in what I see. I'm not putting my hope in what I hear. I'm putting my hope in what God says. That's why I'll, I, I say it a lot. Cancer can't kill you. Fear attached to cancer will. 
All things are possible to he who believes. That word things is the Greek word rhema. The word is described in two Greek words, logos and rhema. Logos is the written word. Rhema is the spoken word. Rhema is the power of God. It doesn't say that all logos is possible. Just because it's written in that book doesn't make it powerful. It's powerful when it connects in your heart, you buy in and speak it with your mouth. That's where all things now are possible. All spoken, the spoken word of God's promise, it's all possible to he who believes. You know, and, it, it, and not only being weak in faith, he didn't consider his own body already dead since he was 100 years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb, who was 90. He didn't waver, listen, he didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't waver at the promise of God through what he saw or what he heard, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. See, our faith always, it's not about stuff. Please hear this. You being blessed and getting the stuff, it's not about the stuff. It's you being blessed and getting the stuff and glorifying God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised What God had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. See, that's what our faith produces. Now, it wasn't written for his sake alone, but it was imputed to him. Now listen, but also for us. The blessings of Abraham would come upon us. and, And imputed to us who believe In him who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Who was delivered up because of our offenses, our sin, our transgressions. And was raised because of our justification. All that Abraham and Sarah had to bring to the table was dependence upon God. That's all they brought. It's the song we just sang. All I've got is a hallelujah, God. That's all God wants. That's what made the promise real. That's what made it fulfilled and alive was their dependence on God. Faith in God is complete dependence upon God. Are you trusting God? Yeah, and my paycheck, and my medication, and my what? fill in the blank. There's no other way for us to please God. Without total dependence upon him, we can't please him. We walk by dependence on God, not what our senses are revealing. I'll just tell you, for me, for my money, it's easy for me to depend upon God because he has always been faithful. Always. You have to receive this as wisdom today. It's not just my opinion Man, go back to the Word and read the Word and say, God, show yourself real and alive. And I'll tell you what, you start reading the Bible like that, words will jump out and grab your face. You have to receive that this as wisdom and trust God and understand that He has your best interest in store for you. That's why your latter days will be greater than your former. That's why He'll turn mourning into laughter. He'll turn sorrow into joy. Where you're... Where in your life do you need to put dependence upon God's promise? Where is it? Is it in your finances? Is it it in relationships? Is it in your ministry? Is it in... Where in your life? Have you you withheld dependence on God just hoping it's going to work out? And hoping that by by osmosis it's just going to happen. It doesn't happen that way. That mountain that's in front of your life, that's keeping you from what God's called you to, to to God's blessing, that is not going to move unless you put a demand on it moving. God, listen, God's blessings aren't just going to drop on you unless you put a demand on those blessings. See, that's who we are now. And I know that that there's people out there that are like, man, that way, you got to take a softer view on that. I can't. I can't, because let me tell you, if I start doing it in the little things, 
I'll be doing it in the big things. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So when it gets to life and death, I want to be ready. I want to have my feet, on, my legs under me. I want to have that sure word of faith in my heart and in my mouth that I can speak to that mountain, be removed, to be cast to the sea. And I don't receive any doubt in my heart. I have what I say in Jesus' name. And God, it, it, pertaining anybody, even the jacks that have been in my life, I forgive them, God. I forgive everybody of everything in Jesus' name. Now, God... It's working out, because you said it was. See, that's who, that's who we have to be. Man, we've got to be hard line, demand situations turned to good. The Bible says every good and per perfect gift comes from above, so it's good and perfect when it comes from God. But it also said God, the things the enemy means for bad, God will turn it to good. So everything that hits your life ends up good. But you know what? It comes in doubt form when it comes from the enemy. The lie of the enemy. Man, are things working out in your life? Heck yeah, they are. Are you kidding me? That's all things can do is work out in your life. Do you understand that? They have to. Why? Because that's what God's mandated, and that's what you put your faith in, your trust in, and your, your total dependence on it's working out. And how's it going to work out? It's going to work out for your good. It's going to work out for your good. Things are going to get great for you in your life. And you know what? Oh, the world's going crazy. No, dad gum duh. That, that's ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, the world's been going crazy. Well, the darkness is so dark. No. It's just absent of light. Jesus started out as the light of the world. Then he said, hey, Tag, you're the light of the world. Me? I didn't ask for that, that, that responsibility. No, that comes with the call, man. That comes with the mandate. You got to put your life up on a lampstand. Hey, looky, looky. Look here. This is how we win. Any questions? I don't want comments because some of you guys bug me. <laughs> it's like, any other questions? Some of you guys, I got a comment. Yeah, I don't like you. <laughs> God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for who you are and what you're about. God, you're so great. You're greatly to be praised. God, thank you for your word today. It's life to us, it's health to all our flesh. Pray this with me, will you, and, and mean it. Father God, I give you my life. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life today and forever. God, thank you for starting a work in me. And thank you for completing that work. God, I thank you now that I'm moving to perfection in my life because of the maturity because of the creative ability of your Holy Spirit on the inside of me. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. I'm going to heaven. I'll never smell the scent of hell. And God, I proclaim my life on this earth as heaven on earth. God, help me rescue people stuck in the world. God, to come to the kingdom. God, I put a demand on your promise that if you're lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you. And God, I'm, I'm earmarking people to be drawn to you as I lift you up. God, I thank you my body's healed and there's healing in my hands. There's salvation on my lips. I'm born again, God. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. God, I thank you now every dead gum thing I put my hand to prospers and no weapon formed against me ever will God I thank you now sickness and disease has no quarter in my life when I walk into a room sickness in other people's bodies has to take notice I take authority as I walk into rooms 
I preach so that people respect it. They may not like it, God, but they have to respect it. God, because the full force of heaven comes behind what I say. God, you're amazing. This life's amazing. I want all of you I can get. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit afresh and anew as a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.